concerning me to let them know they are invincible, that they are unstoppable, that they are in dominion, they are more than conquerors, and what they decree will come to pass. It is your job and your role to make sure they hear my voice. And when you walk out of this place, Today on Living by Invisible, coming around into the visible, and God starts to expand who you are and expand your influence and expand your attraction and expand your gifts and talents. Hunt your neighbor said the man is talking about you. Understand that. I'm going after those things like never before. I'm, I'm coming after those things. It is my whole heart's desire, especially and in particularly in this year of realized dreams that you witness firsthand with your very own eyes the potential and the possibilities and the gifts and the callings and the anointings that exist in you. I'm going to agitate. I'm going to stir up those things that God has placed in you. And you got to understand these things are not primarily, the, the purpose of these things are not primarily for you, but there's a world that's awaiting the very purpose that God had in mind from the foundation of the world. That's why your mom and your daddy got together. You're not just a product of your parents' passion, but you are a product of the purpose of God. And we have to now put emphasis on this purpose. What did God have in his mind from the very beginning when or why you are here today. What, what's, what's up, God? That's what, that's what I need to discover. That's what I need you to find out. And I'm going to be working on this project, this process, all throughout this year to get you to see that there's a plan that God has for you and you are about to see your greater days, the days that you have been waiting for. Your, your, your best days are still ahead of you. I, I don't care what have transpired. I, I don't care what you've been involved in. I, I don't care who your mom and daddy is. It doesn't matter what side of the track you have come from, what has been dealt to you, you are about to see the very best things that God. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm telling you, I know, I know what's, I know what's on my life. I know what God is doing. I, I see this whole thing unfolding and, and, and as it is with the, the, the things of God and, and the plan of God, God will always reveal what he is about to do in leadership, then it expands. Yes. So if my life is expanding and going up and I'm starting to see some things that I've never seen about my own life and the anointing and the possibilities, it is obvious to me that you are about to see some things that even it's going to fascinate you about yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Oh, man, Lord Jesus. I, I, I sent the anointing of uh, T.D. Jakes on me. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, lean over on your neighbor. Tell him, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> Glory to God. And I'm ready for this thing, man. I said I'm ready for this thing. Did you hear me? I said I'm ready for this thing. I told you on last week that you were engineered to excel. Say that. I am engineered to excel. Another thing I mentioned to you as it relates to this lesson concerning some things you may have missed concerning faith was that if everything has to make sense to you, you will never know how to walk by faith. Now, because you've been designed and engineered to excel and for excellence, as a matter of fact, my son Ken, he spoke over this group uh, and, and every last uh, group that we uh, assembled on last week. He said there's an, a success, success acceleration on this church. There's an acceleration of success that's on this church. We have, we've tapped into something. Well, he didn't have to say that for me to know it. He simply confirmed what I've already have taken witness to. But in order to, and just because you've been engineered to excel, which is the root words for excellence, doesn't necessarily guarantee that you will. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As for me in this house, house we shall excel. I said we shall excel. My job is to help you to explore, to expose, and then to excel. And we've been developing this thing, man. I mean, a faith that is focused beyond all natural circumstances. There are some natural circumstances that exist, but I'm telling you, this system, this lifestyle that we are about to walk in will cause us to bypass natural circumstances. Ordinarily, the things you would have to go through, this lesson is going to teach you how to bypass those things so that you can have this acceleration into this success. Hunt your neighbor, man, say success is waiting for you. Success is waiting for you. Let's, let me take my time here today, man. Hunt your neighbor, say don't rush that man. Now, what you got to understand, where you are right now and what you have right now, it is a product of what you've been doing up till now. And so maybe there are some other things that we are going to have to begin to implement in our lives in order for us to see this turnabout, this change, this success that I'm talking about. Because here's my plan. Here's my plan. My plan is if that you're barely making it, if you are barely making it, by the end of this year, you're going to be in the overflow. Amen. Now, I'm giving this thing some time simply because the process, the promise has already taken place. Okay, now I'll throw that in. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me just, let me just work this here now. I, I want to be seated and Lord Jesus, I can jump in this thing so fast. Just give me about 20 more minutes, Holy Ghost, then we'll let her rip. <laughs> if I can get your tense to change. If I can get your tent to change, some of our dispositions relative to what we believe are locked into the future tense. I got to get you functioning from another tense 
because everything that God is ever going to do has already been done. You got to get a hold of this. You know, even terms and statements or sayings like, won't he do it? Won't he do it? It sets us up to posture ourselves in thinking that God has to create things in order for us to have what we have just pronounced over you. Well, quite, quite contrary to what we've been thinking about our future tense, God has already done. And if I can get you functioning from that kind of precept, that kind of concept or pretext, if I can get you functioning, oh, calm down, man. If I can get you functioning from that place and knowing that something you have been waiting for has already been given, it's going to propel or catapult you into a posture where this rest that we've been talking about in Hebrews 4 will take total dominance in your life. Now, I believe, and in some cases it's true, the happiest time for heaven is when many believers are asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Simply because there's no possible way of interfering in the process with doubt and unbelief and worry and weariness all of these other things because there is something that's synonymous with a sleep, a rest in a believer that is directly connected to this rest that we can have in our faith. Are you listening to me? Because there is a place in your faith that will cause a complete rest. Say that with me. There is a place. In my, faith, in my faith, which causes, which causes complete, rest. complete rest, right? Let's, let's, let's really try to go through Hebrews 4 here. Go to Hebrews 4. Let's look at some things. Shall there is a place, there is a place in, my faith, in my faith where it provides, it provides complete rest. Hebrews chapter number four. Glory be to God. Shout, this is my year. This is my year. What did I say, four? Let's look at it, uh, if, you, if you have it, out of the Message Bible. Well, let's, let's, let's read it, uh, uh, and pardon me, media department, let's read it first out of the uh, New King James. Glory to God. If you have it, say, I have it. All right. Ready, read. Therefore, Therefore, since a promise remains, let us fear to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed, as he has said, watch this, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all of his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter. Verse number six, right? 
since therefore it remains that some must enter it and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience or unbelief. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, today, after such a long time, it has been said. Watch this. Today, if you what? If you hear his voice, do not harden your what? Okay, go on. Okay. There, 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 what now? Let's read that again. There remains, therefore. Okay. Okay. All right. Let us be what? Diligent. Let us be what? Diligent, Diligent to enter that rest. That rest. That rest. Of, of disobedience. That's why these things were written. That's why these things were given so that we will not follow suit with those who did not enter. I don't know about you, I don't want to follow anybody who's not going where God told me to go. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I'll say just right there that it does matter what church you go to. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. Come on, man, let me take my time in this. Okay, what verse are we? Not really. Let's go back to 10. <laughs> Ready, read. That's like that kind of sleep that I'm talking about. He has himself also ceased from his work as God did from his. All right? Okay, verse number 11. To enter that rest of disobedience for the word of God and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there hidden from his sight to whom we must give an account. Verse number 14, seeing then that we have who has passed Jesus the Son of God let us hold fast our confession for we do not have a high priest who cannot sit up without Come on. Come on. But was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Come on, Jesus. Let us do what? Come boldly to the throne of grace and find grace. Okay, now go back to verse number 10. Go back to verse number 10. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Now, watch this. To rest is not to cease from working. Say that. To rest is not to cease from working. But while I'm working, there's a confidence, there's this confidence and this assurance in the finished work of Jesus Christ. 
okay? Which builds this trust, builds this trust in us that causes us to know that everything has already been finished on our behalf. Amen. Are, are you still here? Yes. Yes. Now, there are five things that are critical, and I use the number five because it represents the, 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 the number for grace, that are absolutely critical for you to establish this kind of trust, which ultimately leads to this rest that Hebrews is referring to. And ladies and gentlemen, when this is established, it creates now in you this positivity, this, this confidence, this, this overwhelming peace that you know with absolute assurance that if God be for you, there will be nothing that will be able to stand against you. You're going to be so established in this that people are going to wonder why and how you are not losing it and, and acting out of character because this rest based upon the things that you're going to be implementing this year is going to hold you in place. As a matter of fact, I'll go as far as to say it's going to surpass and even surprise yourselves. <laughs> 20, yes, ma'am. <laughs> This chick says she got a question. <laughs> no, she didn't say, I, I got a question. I hope I have an answer. Okay. Because you said our, our resting is not ceasing. We're not ceasing from work. Right. So now are you getting ready to tell us these are the works that we must implement? Because if he is rested and you're saying we don't work anymore, you know, I'm just trying to make that all plain and clear. You have a microphone up there? Boy, she hadn't realized that I'm back now. <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have, but I just want to be clear. Yes, ma'am. Because you you just made a comment a, a few minutes ago about when you read um, verse 10, and when you said that for he has entered into his rest, and him he himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. So you said that to rest is not to <coughs> work, is not ceasing from work for us. Yes, ma'am. So I need that explained. Are you getting ready to say the things, those five things that you're getting ready to give us, is that the work that we do? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I would like to know, did anybody else hear that? And then, okay. It's, it wasn't a good question. <laughs> because all she had to do was wait. <laughs> I'm getting there. No, because if you don't move along, and I'm glad she made that point, and, and I don't like for any one of you to hear something that I have said that causes a contradiction in your thinking. Ah, oh, God, duh. So, because this year is the year we're going to get all our ducks in a row. No, no, I know how this thing works. I know how this thing works. 
and I have tested it, and I'm willing to give you a money back guarantee if it doesn't come to pass in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'll be willing to say whatever tithe you've given to this church, if it doesn't come to pass, I'll find out a way to give you every dime of it back. Hunt your neighbor and say, that's a bad man. <laughs> now listen to me. But you're going to have to comply with everything I'm telling you because I found out that this God, L.L. El Yon, is not a respectful person. And what he has done for one, all things being equal, he'll have to do for you. And what he's doing for me, it is about to happen in you. You're going to see this thing like never before, boy. You're going to see this thing like never before. And I'm going to tell you something. I am amazed, and that's why I told you almost to the point, hi, baby, almost to the point, it's good to see you. Almost to the point where it's going to surprise you of the things that God has already done. See, see now watch this, because I could have easily, easily said what he's going to do, but I'm transforming your thinking into another tense. So you'll start talking and walking and already the finished work of what he's already done. Because watch this, I'm even amazed. I'm surprised at all of the things that God is doing in my life. It is blowing literally my mind because I've never imagined that some of the things, you know, you kind of think about things, but when you start seeing what was in the invisible coming around into the visible and God starts to expand who you are and expand your influence and expand your attraction and expand your gifts and talents. Hunt your neighbor said the man is talking about you. Thank you for viewing Living by Faith. If you would like to obtain a copy of today's lesson or any other featured item, please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to become a Living by Faith Partner of Purpose today. We thank you for your financial support, which has enabled this program to bless millions around the world. You are helping us to make it happen. who she happens to be in her own heart, where this boldness and confidence exudes out of her every fiber when she stands. I stand in full boldness and confidence and nothing can stop who I am. 